This video is an extract from an interview where an art professional shares their top tips for artists. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy this video. Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar with John Sharples. He is an intellectual property and commercial art lawyer. He is one of the best known advocates for artists' rights in the UK. So he advises clients across creative industries, particularly the art market and museums. He is the go-to lawyer for artists and galleries. And he's also, if that wasn't enough, because that's plenty, an avid collector and curator. One of the other things that obviously you specialize in and you've seen a lot of is contracts. So first of all, do you recommend having a contract? And is there anything that you should look out for to know that you're not being taken advantage of? So I would say there has been something that is nothing short of a revolution in practice in this area as recently as the last 10 years, because 30 years ago, the art world was almost entirely done on the basis of handshakes and relationships, even at the very high end, and perhaps especially at the very high end. And over time, the idea was, well, that's just how business is done in the art world. And I would say that has been completely turned on its head in the last five to ten years and now the norm is for written contracts there are very few galleries now that and i'm not saying there are zero but there are very few galleries that don't have for example written consignment terms and i do understand uh, sometimes artists themselves are resistant to contracts because they have in mind that a contract might be some kind of instrument of oppression that's used to bind them into arrangements that work to their disadvantage. And I do understand that point of view. But I would say that contracts are a great leveller where there is an imbalance of power and resources. And it always suits the more powerful party not to have a contract. Because a contract is a way that uh, someone with less power and less re resources can hold a more powerful party to account. Even something like when a gallery goes bust, it's so important to have some written evidence of the basis on which the gallery held any works that were on consignment. Because otherwise, uh, something that we've seen sadly all too much in the UK recently is, is galleries going bust and having not paid on the proceeds of sale to artists, having not returned physical works back to artists. And artists are left in a terrible position if they can't say, here's my consignment agreement. And so you're absolutely right. It's the most natural thing in the world. I, I, I always say it's, I'm a, a turkey farmer voting for Christmas because I write contracts for a living. And of course, I'm an advocate for, for written contracts. But I would say even without lawyers, it's, it's still better to have a written record of what you've agreed. And it's a mistake to think of contracts as being magic spells that use a certain form of words to achieve a magical result because you've got the Latin in the right order. Absolutely not. The main thing is the discipline of sitting down to write down what you've agreed. First of all, it flushes out questions that the parties might not otherwise have thought of or discussed. And so the actual act of recording something flushes out those questions the second thing is that memories are faulty even in a very short period of time people and people's interpretation of what was discussed and what was agreed is remarkably faulty even when they're not being dishonest even when in, even in good faith people misremember things um, i think the age of, has gone for it to be professional for anyone to say, oh, we don't do contracts, we just work on relationships. And no artist now should worry about looking awkward to work with or litigious by insisting on written terms. It is now, it's a market standard to use written terms. Can I write my own contract when handing work over to a gallery? Well, you can. And of course, they can say, we agree with terms one, two, four, and seven, but actually, and this is, uh, but we don't agree with terms three, five, and six. And actually, that then starts a conversation about what you both sides can agree to. And that's a healthy conversation to have. And that's uh, ahead of any arrangement, having that sort of conversation it, it is worthwhile. So it can def definitely be written in plain English. It definitely doesn't need a lawyer. I should just say, generally, I do think that artists should be far less afraid of trying to engage a lawyer's help. Speaking to a lawyer is not like getting in a taxi. The meter doesn't start running as soon as you're having the conversation. And so finding how you can use lawyers and push the boundaries of what, what 
guidance you can get for free is a life skill in itself. I think if I was to want to leave everyone with an overarching message is that culturally things have moved a lot and artists are now in a better position to assert themselves than ever before. And now it's expected that an artist who takes care over what they're doing will take enough care to have some requests legally. And sometimes it's discussed in the art press at the moment. We've seen a series of announcements where massive galleries like House and Worth are now co-representing artists with other galleries. And then for me, the main reason for that is it's because artists want that and they're asking for it. And this and the and artists now feel empowered to say, even to Hauser and Worth, if I'm going to sign for you, I would like to do right by my gallery that's got me to where I am today. So can we have an arrangement where you share with them? And so artists are asking for stuff and being given it, whether it's co-representation or whether it's resale restrictions that mean work doesn't appear at auction shortly after being sold stuff all those sorts of things artists are asserting themselves and i would encourage all of you to do that too thanks for watching this video if you want to watch the full one hour interview and get top tips from an expert then click the link below and join the art ladder mentoring program now by joining the art ladder you will get access to our full library of webinars with curators collectors critics gallerists, and more. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this, and check out the description below for more free resources for artists.